Give God a great big hand praise. Come on, worship him, worship him. Come on, worship him. I say, come on and worship him. my man, I'm going to call him this little bit. I say, come on and worship him. Just a little bass, just a little bass. Thank you, Jesus. A little bass. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's a spirit of worship in here. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, Master. Lord, we praise you. We adore you. We magnify your holy name. Nobody but you, Jesus. Glory to you, Master. Glory to you, Master. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You can be seated today. We thank God for each and every one of you that have graced us with your presence on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon worship and deliverance service here in the beautiful city of Gulfport, Mississippi. Amen. I just believe there's a breakthrough. There's a Holy Ghost breakthrough. And I got to have it. I don't know about you, but I, I need a breakthrough. I can't live without it. I can't be without it. I got to have it. And every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. Jesus said, pray and say, Lord, give us our daily bread. Look at your neighbor and say, what I got the other day. I need something else today. I don't care how good the meal was yesterday, Brother Montgomery. I was hungry today. Say amen. And I'm looking for something special. Special honor to all of my elders, their lovely wives. Appreciate you. All my deacons, their lovely wives. Thank God for all of you. Church mother, Mother Barker, my sister Dorothy. Men, absence, and all of the visitors, saints, and friends, we love you. Appreciate God, those of you near and far. And those of you in the live stream, once again, my live stream family, this is your live stream pastor. Coming to you, bringing you the gospel message, hoping that it's taking you to another dimension, another realm. There's a higher height and a deeper depth. I'm not satisfied with the outer court. Thank God for the brazen altar. For the shed blood, thank God for the labor, where I can get washed up, the washing of the water by the word. I thank God for the inner court, the altar of incense, the seven golden candlesticks. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the shoe bread, but I need to get some place where the devil can't come. I want to get somewhere where. Job said the wicked cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. I want to get somewhere where the wicked one touches me not. Lift your hand and say I won't be satisfied until I get in to the holies of holies. David said I will not be satisfied until I awaken with his what? His likeness. In other words, until I get back to the original man that had total victory and authority we was made in his image and until David said I get back to that likeness to that realm of authority to I can have power over all flesh till I can get back to that realm and authority and dominion where I got power over all flesh point to yourself and say get back to that realm where I got power over all flesh See, God wasn't just telling him that he had power over all flesh this way. He was telling him he had power over all flesh this way. In other words, him first. See, the average one of us got power over everybody else, but we ain't got power over ourselves. You know what I mean? Saying, so in other words, like, physician, save yourself. You know, just let the husband man 
be first partaker. The Bible said having a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In no sense you're trying to correct me if you ain't corrected. He said, why behold is the moat, the little lint ball that's in your brother's eye, and you don't behold the beam that is in thine eye. He gave you a name for those of you that look at other people and criticize other people. He called you a hypocrite. He said, hypocrite, first, get the beam out of thine own eye. And then you'll be able to see the moat that, in the, that is in our brother's eye clearly. Because you might have thought it was a moat, but it might not have been a moat. The other day, I was brother was telling me to wipe the booger off my face. Well, I went to wipe it. I went to wipe it. And he said, it's bigger there. But as he got closer, he realized it wasn't a booger, it was a moat. which couldn't be wiped off. So far off, he thought I had a booger. But when he seen clearly, it was a mole. How many folk did we done seen boogers and didn't know? <laughs> and it was a mole. And I'm just a wiping. I'm just a wiping. I'm, just, I'm steady trying to wipe. I'm trying to get rid of because he's steady. I'm trying to get rid of it, but it wasn't going nowhere because it wasn't a booger. Those of you on the live stream, we do love you. We appreciate God for you. Now give me undivided attention, amen? This is a very serious hour that we are living in. To the book of 1 Samuel, beloved, chapter 16, and begin reading to you for verse 14. 1 Samuel, verse 16, chapter 16, verse 14. I want you to listen and be attentive as you possibly can today. Those of you on the live stream, amen, always look on the website and uh, Trumpet and Zion Fellowship dot com. Trumpet and Zion, we do have a web page and you can get all the current events and all of the places that we're going to be at, the addresses of the churches, Amen. So sometimes you be calling. Just get on the website, trumpetandzionfellowship.com. Type on events. Is that okay? To the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, I mean chapter 16, verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubled thee. Now that's the second time. First he said the Lord with all capital letters, meaning the master, the controller, the guide, the owner. And the next one said, A spirit from God, 15 verse, 16 verse. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from where? From God is upon thee, he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be what? Shall be well. 23rd verse, and said, and it came to pass when the evil spirit from where? From God was upon Saul, that David took his harp and played with his hand. And Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit, what? departed from him to the 18th chapter and begin at the 10th verse. 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 10. I hope those listening in the live stream, please pay attention. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from who? The evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he did what? Wait a minute now. No, no, they prophesying now, but people are prophesying. But something evil came upon him, and he prophesied. Something evil not from hell. 
from God came upon him and he prophesied. In the midst of the house and David played with his hands at other times and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Now he's prophesying. But David was playing, trying to get him delivered. But there was a javelin in his hand while he was prophesying. The king sitting up in the pulpit. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided it, avoided out of his presence. You are in the seat of authority prophesying with a murder spirit. That sounds like it's twisted, don't it? But he was prophesying. He was still in the seat of authority. He was still in leadership position. I'm going to show you. God ain't nothing to play with. To the book of 1 Kings. Chapter 22. First Kings chapter 22. First Kings chapter 22. And I begin reading to you from verse. Fifteen. Make it make it thirteen. 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 13. Won't be before you very long. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold, now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Everybody saying the same thing. Everybody speaking the same word. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them. And speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go up to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered and said, go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Now watch this. People come to church. They come to church, and they come because they want to hear. But they really don't want to hear. They want to hear what they want to hear. And the king said, 16 verse, unto him, how many times shall I adjure you, shall I command you, or adjure thee, that thou tell me nothing, watch, that thou tell me nothing but that which is what? That which is what? True in the name of who? The Lord. He said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king, now you just told me to speak the truth. And the king of Israel said unto Jehos Jehoshaphat, did not I tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but what? You asked me to speak the truth, but you telling me the truth is evil. And he said, now, you call it evil? Here we go. He said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Now pay attention what you read. Church world playing. And because we're in the flesh, we like folk to play with us. The Bible said the priests rule by their own means. And we love to have it. They're not even ruling us by the leading of God. They leading us with this earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. We like that. That dog nature. He said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. David said, Lord, let me build your house that you may dwell in. God said, David, who can build me a house to dwell in when the heaven is mine and the earth is mine? So God was sitting not in hell. He was sitting in 
better hear me. He was in heaven, setting in heaven and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and his left. Host represent angels, angelical beings. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab? Who shall convince him? That he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. One set on this manner, another set on that manner. Now this is not in hell, this is not on earth, this is in heaven. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said, well, with. Now you got to convince prophets. You're dealing with people that have discernment, have that, that see, that foresee, that can see things. These are seers. You just can't give them anything. They can discern. And the Lord asked him, wherewith? How are you going to persuade him? He said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and what? Look at the 23rd verse. Say now. Say now. You want to keep playing with it? You want to keep coming to church and think because you just pay your tithes and because you're still showing up? Because you think you can get by and just do what you got to do and ain't nobody caught you yet? You think you can keep doing what you're doing and because the church world giving us a pass and telling us that grace covers it all? He said, now therefore, behold the who? The master that controls them all. The master, the controller, the owner, the guide, had did what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who put that lion spirit? Who put a lion spirit on it? The Lord had put a lion spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord had spoken evil concerning thee. I'm going to give you something that you won't even know is coming. Because I ain't going to send it to you from hell because you can feel evil. I ain't going to send it to you from carnality because you can feel when it's, when it's man. But I'm going to send you something from heaven. Straight from my presence. That still got my anointing on it. You want to play with me? To the book of Romans. Chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Be out of your way. Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. He said, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they had him. They, they, they heard the truth. They knew the truth. They were raised in the truth. Well, taught the truth. But because they failed to retain him, they didn't want to keep him. To retain, like when we was going from, you know, from grade to grade, from fifth to the sixth. Some folk didn't get to go to the sixth because they were retained. They were kept back. He said, even as they did not like to retain, to keep God in their what? In their knowledge. Some, who did it? God did what? God gave them over to what? A reprobate mind, a mind that when they come to church, they can't get nothing. A mind that when the preacher's preaching, no matter how you're preaching, they can't receive it. A garbage can mind. He said, cast not that which is holy under dog, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them up under their feet and turn and rend you. Give them a reprobate mind that they could be in the pulpit, 
Give them a reprobate mind that they can be on the instruments, that they can function on the auxiliaries. Give them a reprobate mind that they can sing on the praise team and be a part of everything. Give them a reprobate mind that, uh, you understand, that they can lead an administrator and don't nothing affect them. There's no change. Put something up on them that they get past. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, you wonder why they can't stop. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, you wonder why they can't stop talking. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, Mess with you, you ain't did nothing. Proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers can't keep a promise. Without natural affection. I told you because of this, I'm going to turn you over to vile affection. That a man will work that with a man that you normally work with a woman. And a woman likewise doing the same thing that homosexual and lesbian spirit. This, I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to give this to you. Because you playing with me. You don't want my knowledge. You don't want the truth. Then I'm going to turn you over to a real lie. I told you that there's a men, straight men, straight women, and people don't believe this, are going to lay down playing with God. Going to lay down and go to bed, straight men that ain't straight and ain't thinking about nothing but women. A straight woman that ain't thinking about nothing but a man. Going to lay down and wake up a homosexual and a lesbian. Brother King Cannon came to pick me up in Atlanta because my flight to Augusta would have been too long. But we stopped to get some gas. And I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there was a homosexual. And he had a spirit upon him that was so subtile. I mean, it was the, the, the thing, that the way he moved, the way he did, it was like, it's, it's the way that a man would look at a woman and just like, like it, it just started that magnetizing that, the way that he moved, the I mean, it wasn't like he was out of beat, like out of time. It looked like he had an extra something that a woman didn't have. And the Lord spoke to me and said, see, that spirit, that's what will get a man that ain't got God. I'm talking about this, this the Holy Ghost on me, the power of God. This man had something on him. Me and my son was on the airplane the other day. They had a man with a similar spirit upon him as the stewardess. His, his outfit was tailored. He had everything like tailored, just like a woman, and he was moving just such a spirit, but, but the Bible said, I'm giving him over. Churches are filled with this spirit. Churches are filled with this homosexual spirit, this lesbian spirit. And preachers are saying, God understands we were born this way and this is. God understands. You may have a cousin. You may have a son. You may have a brother. You may even have a father. But he said, who knowing? They knowing the judgments of God. 32nd verse. That they which do such, which commit such things are, are not worthy to go to hell. They're worthy of what? They're worthy of death. And not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. There's some people that, that, that do the same, but they have pleasure in folk that's doing it. They're enjoying this stuff. You play with me. I can do some stuff to you. Second Thessalonians, I'm through. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Yeah, how do you wait just a minute? Yeah. 
Everybody sort it out what you possibly can. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I begin reading to you from verse 7. For the mystery, now the mystery of God is Christ in you, the hope of glory. In the first chapter of the book of Second Thessalonians, I mean, uh, First Colossians, I mean, Colossians chapter one. But you ain't never seen a top without a bottom. Whatever God has, Satan has it. The mystery of the, of God is Christ in us, the hope of glory. The mystery of iniquity, lawlessness, is Satan in people. Now, I just got finished saying that uh, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day of the Lord shall not come except to come a falling away first. And the man of sin, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or worship as God. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The mystery of iniquity is Satan in people. The hope of damnation. Watch. Just like God got to end the well, Satan got to end the well. People are possessed by Satan. You say that person is full of the devil. Just like we say that person is full of the Holy Ghost. He said, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the bright, with the, with the spirit of his mouth and shall, con and shall destroy him with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and all signs and all lying ones. He's coming, and I wait, he's coming. He cannot come on his own. He's coming with power. He's coming with authority. He's coming with divine permission from God. And the Bible said with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness, now watch, of unrighteousness in them. That perish, not, not, not on them, but in them they perish. He's coming in them that perish. Because there's a reason that he's doing this. Because they receive not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. Leaven thirst. And for this cause, for this purpose. Not a demon, not a devil, but God shall send them strong delusion, shall send them not uh, a lie, but I'm going to send you a strong delusion. See, the next step from a delusion is an illusion. In other words, I can make you see something that ain't even there. I can make you see it so vividly that nobody will ever be able to tell you it's not. He said, for this cause I shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth because they had pleasure in unrighteousness. Father God, in the name of Jesus, now Lord, for these next few minutes, I pray God that you would anoint me. Let them see you and not me. Let the very words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my I'm asking you for a divine miracle right now. Touch the hearts and the minds of these people. Let them see you. Give them, Lord, an anointing. Let the spirit of wisdom and a revelation be upon them. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Now, I want you to listen to me. Let me establish some fact with you. The Bible said in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. But David said, thy word, O, o God, is forever settled in the heaven. Forever, not, not, not just there for a moment, but forever. He said, I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. And because of this, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. 
He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He said, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variableness, neither is there any shadow of turning in him. There's no change. It's impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. Whatsoever God does, he doeth forever. He does not change. Now something, this is why God uh, had to send man through the wilderness after he brought him up out of the house of bondage. First thing he had to do, he had to send him through the wilderness. Why would you send uh, your children that have been in bondage for 400 years and been up under a taskmaster that ever worked them so bad till they were sick and uh, weakly? And, uh, why would you, after 400 years, bring them out after you made a promise to them that you would give them a land uh, that floweth with milk and honey, a land that have houses built uh, that they didn't build, houses filled that they didn't fill, uh, vineyards planted that they didn't plant, uh, 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 wells dug that they didn't deal. Uh, why would you bring them out? You could have took them around the long way. It wasn't but a three days journey. But why would you take them the long way around? I know you said uh, that they wasn't ready for war. I agree with you. They were a little feeble, a little weak, and they weren't ready for war because that would have been too much. But you took them the long way around. Uh, and then you uh, told Moses uh, to take 12 men, choose uh, 12 men out of every tribe. Uh, I'm not talking about just any kind. I'm talking about the captains. Uh, I'm talking about the rulers, man. Uh, I'm talking about the rulers. I'm talking about the influencers. Uh, I'm talking about those that got uh, influence over people, those that can speak uh, and other folks will move. Are uh, y'all listening to me? Uh, uh, get me 12 men uh, to go spy out the land. First of all, Moses, uh, you done been up on the mountain. Uh, you done been up on the mountain and you understand. Uh, you understand that my word is forever settled in the heaven. You know, you've had a relationship with me to know uh, that I'm a God that don't lie. You understand? I told you that I would give you a land that flow up with milk and honey. Uh, and I told you I'm going to give you the land of the Canaanites, the Hebrides, uh, the uh, the Jebusites, the Gergesites, the Parasites, the Anakim, and I told you that I would send my angel before you to drive out the enemy. I told you that I would do this, but I'm telling you now, send 12 spies over to the land to spy the land out. And when they went in, it was the time of the first ripe fruit. It was the time for the first ripe fruit. So they went over there, and they were over there for 40 days. So after 40 days, they came back uh, with a cluster of grapes so big uh, that it took two men to carry just one cluster of grapes. Uh, and when they came back, uh, and when they came back, y'all, listen to me carefully. Uh, when they came back, uh, the Bible said that they looked uh, uh, and the ten uh, stood up and they said, uh, the land is exactly what God said it was. That uh, uh, God didn't lie. The land is exactly what God said it was. Uh, you understand? Uh, it is a land that flows with milk and honey. It is a land uh, of plenty. Uh, but it's a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. Uh, it's a land that's inhabited by giants. Uh, and we are like grasshoppers in their sight. Uh, we will not be able to take the land. Uh, we're not going to be able to do it. Uh, but the Bible said that Caleb rent his clothes uh, and said we're well able to take it, but you know how the majority rules. So when the children of Israel heard, you understand about the ten spies giving an evil report and discouraging the people, the people begin to weep. They begin to weep loud. And after they started weeping, after weeping comes the next phase. They start murmuring and complaining. And then murmuring and complaining ain't nothing but a prophecy. You understand? After the murmuring and complaining, they said, listen, let us us go back. Let the dog nature come back alive. Let us go back into the land of Egypt. Uh, you understand? At least we had uh, graves to be buried in. At least we had uh, onions and garlic and leek to eat. Uh, let us go back to, to the land of bondage. Uh, Y'all don't hear me what I'm saying. Let us go back uh, to the very thing that made us sick uh, and made us cry under God. Uh, God told Moses, I am that I am uh, have come down by reason uh, of the taskmaster. I've heard the cries of my people. They were crying. They didn't even know who they were crying to. 
you. But I done brought them out. But God said, all right. Uh, you understand? Uh, 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 since you want to listen uh, to the ten spies. Uh, he said, for, 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 for each day, uh, you understand, it would be a year. You was over there for 40 days. Uh, I'm going to add a year to each day. Uh, I'm going to be, you're going to spend 40 uh, years in the wilderness. Now, pay attention now. Uh, what is the purpose? Uh, God don't make no mistake. The way of God is perfect. Uh, you understand how is the heavens uh, or above the earth? That's how high his ways and his thoughts are uh, above ours. Uh, he said, you will remain in the wilderness uh, for 40 years. I now, uh, I want you to remember, I want you to remember all the way, not the devil, not demons, uh, not your haters. Uh, I want you to remember all the way that the Lord thy God led thee uh, these 40 years uh, in the wild. No, not the wild. Uh, wilder. No, not wilder. Uh, led you in the wilderness. Uh, you couldn't have just led me into the wild. Uh, you had to lead me something in, uh, that's wilder than wild. Uh, and you do have to lead me to something wilder than wild. Uh, wilderness. Uh, you led me into something uh, that's out of totally out of my control. Uh, I'm talking about something that uh, I don't even know what to do. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, you led me through the wilderness. Uh, and what did you do it for? Uh, the only reason I got to do this as purpose I got to do it. Because uh, you'll never be able to get anywhere with me uh, until you get this understanding. Uh, I led you through. I want you to remember all the way that uh, I led you through this ter great and terrible wilderness. What? Uh, first thing, to humble you. Uh, I'm doing it to humiliate you. Because uh, you think you're smarter than me. Uh, you think you're wiser than me. Uh, it's something about man that flesh uh, always think is smarter than God. Uh, I made you, Eve, uh, to be a helpmate. Uh, you understand? I made you the way I wanted to make you. But uh, you're going to let somebody tell you with your ambitious self that you can have more than I gave you. You always want to step ahead of God. You understand? Here's a knowledge. Here's another knowledge. Why are you talking to an understudy? Why are you talking to somebody that's beneath you? You understand? Telling you that you got a knowledge. You understand? Here's a tree that is able to make thee wise. I made you that way. I've given you the wisdom from the jump of the flesh. We got the tendency in me, you, every one of us to think we're smarter than God. We're not satisfied the way God made us. So we stick holes in our ears. We stick holes in our nose. We're not satisfied the way God give up made us. So we put tattoos on our body. You understand? We clip our eyebrows. Y'all don't hear me what I'm saying. We're not satisfied with the way God made us. So we want to change hair colors, eye colors. We want to go from a 32 to a 38. We want to go to a, from a 32 to a to a to a to a, 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 a 36 or 40. Y'all don't kill me. Uh, uh, we're not satisfied uh, with the little eyelashes. We want something else. Uh, we're not satisfied uh, with the wisdom and the knowledge God gave us. Uh, you understand? God gave us uh, 66 books. Uh, you understand? Uh, that's something about man uh, don't want to deal with this. Uh, they don't want to deal with the book of life. Uh, they don't want to deal with a book that gives you peace of mind and joy divine. Uh, somewhere down the line. Uh, flesh says uh, there's some lost books there's some other books uh, there's some other stuff that we need uh, and so we leave this uh, this knowledge this knowledge uh, that gives you peace this knowledge uh, that gives you to be the head and not to tell we, we, we want to get smarter than God uh, so we in that same hour that everybody think they're smarter than God uh, the Bible said in the book of Romans because uh, they failed to retain God in their knowledge uh, they had him uh, but they're professing themselves to be wise uh, let them become fools uh, when they were humble and they were crying uh, and they were saying Lord uh, I want to be like Jesus Lord uh, lead me and guide me uh, into all truth and they were praying uh, and saying Lord uh, please Lord teach me thy ways oh God uh, and lead me in the plain paths because of my enemies uh, when they were praying Lord uh, give me the tongue of the Lord uh, that I may speak a word in this season to the river when they were praying Lord uh, let your anointing be upon me uh, to teach me uh, you understand all things. Are y'all listening to the Let your anointing be up on me, God. And we would want to be led. Lord, let me be led by your spirit. 
And all of a sudden now, we done got the Holy Ghost. We done got the, the power of the living God. And somebody tell us that we need a, we need a, a, a certificate. And we need a, some papers. And everybody that used to be, used to be sister such and such. And brother such and such. Now we done stepped into the flesh. And we done gone. We want to be doctors and lawyers. Y'all don't kill me. We want to be a, I mean, a doctor such and such. And bishops. We got to have titles behind our name now because we done stepped into the flesh. God spoke to me and said, when well, any time you stop following me, automatically you're going to follow your flesh and the devil. And your flesh is, ex is self-exalted. We want something else. We think we're smarter than God. So when you step away from God, professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Now watch this. The Bible said that how that God brought them out of the land of Egypt and they were following a prophet. They were following a prophet. They were following Samuel. All but flesh always looking at other churches. They ever look at it. Come to Trump. You go and visit in moonlight. Other churches. And want to come back here and talk about what we under bondage. And what we can't do at Trump and Zion. Went over. Now you understand the children of Israel. Being led by a man. That was getting nothing but straight vocals from God. I'm talking about straight intervention from God. Samuel was the, the mouthpiece of God. Y'all listen to me. What the children of Israel said, we don't want a prophet no more. We don't want a prophet no more, Trevor. We don't want a prophet no more. We don't want a prophet. And Samuel got upset. He got hurt, Kim. You understand? Because Samuel thought they were rejecting him. But God says, Samuel, they're not rejecting you. You're just a mouthpiece. They're rejecting me. They don't want me no more. They don't want the living word no more. Tell them they want a king because they see other nations with a king. They want to act like the world. They want to be like the world. They want something. Tell them if they get a king. Tell them that a king gonna take their sons uh, and make servants out of them. Tell them uh, if they get a king, uh, the king gonna take their daughters uh, and make maids out of them. Tell them if they get a king, uh, that the king gonna take their land uh, and put them up under body. Tell them uh, if they get a king. Uh, and Samuel went out there and told them uh, that the people said, we don't care. We still want to be like everybody else. Uh, we want us a king. Uh, what the Bible said that God uh, spoke. Uh, you understand? You know the story. Uh, how about Samuel? Saul, uh, you understand his father's uh, uh, ashes was lost uh, and how God sent him on a journey uh, but, but it went on to make a story short uh, amen, so, uh, Samuel appeared uh, under Saul uh, you understand the son of Kish uh, was of the tribe of Benjamin uh, of the least family uh, of the tribe of Benjamin uh, you understand it came to Saul uh, to anoint Saul uh, to be king over Israel show you how uh, meek and lowly the man was, uh, how how humble he was uh, during the day of inauguration. Uh, he went and tried to hide himself because he didn't even feel worthy. He was felt little uh, like I'm not even worthy, you understand, uh, to do such a thing. Uh, he was so unworthy. He tried to hide himself. But God anointed Samuel. I mean Samuel anointed Saul uh, to be king over Israel. Uh, and when God anointed him, uh, God sent him up the hill to the prophets. Uh, and the Bible said the Spirit of God uh, came up on Saul. Uh, and turned the man into a turned him into another man uh, and he come down out the mountain prophesied uh, he had a whole other anointing upon him uh, the hand of the Lord was upon him uh, Saul's name ringed uh, throughout every region uh, people were afraid of him uh, Saul was a terror to witches uh, and voodoo workers he was a terror folk was running from him because uh, he knew that he stood up for the Lord uh, you understand uh, and God spoke unto him uh, and told him one day he said now listen. Uh, he said, now I want you to do something. Uh, he said, I'm getting ready to go uh, and I'm getting ready to go out and you be still. Uh, Samuel said, just be still and wait for me. Uh, don't do nothing. You're of the Benjamite tribe. Uh, you're not a Levite. Uh, so stay here and wait for me. Uh, so here come the Philistines. Uh, instead of him sitting there waiting, uh, he listened to the people. Uh, the people said, Saul, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, where's Samuel? We don't know where Samuel is. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, you understand? Uh, and the Bible said that Saul 
took and offered up a sacrifice unto the Lord. Y'all don't kill me, but I'm saying being a Benjamite, going against the rules and the regulation because of what people say. Because of what people say. How many preachers today are led by the people? How many preachers are led by the congregation? You can't hardly find a preacher that's led, that's leading the people. You don't find leaders no more. They, they led by the deacon board. They led by some type of committee. Where are the real leaders at that listens to the voice of God? That's Saul. He listened to the people and offered up a sacrifice. But at the evening, at the time of the evening sacrifice, here comes Samuel. And Samuel said, Saul, what in the world have you done? What have you done, Saul? He said, the people, you understand, they didn't know what happened to you. And, 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 uh, and watch this. And uh, I forced myself. Uh, I forced myself uh, to offer up a sacrifice. Uh, you had to do something that you knew was wrong. You did something that you knew was out of order. You did something that your own conviction uh, told you was wrong. Uh, you forced yourself uh, to offer up a sacrifice. Uh, he said, Saul, uh, you could have had the kingdom of God forever. You could have sat on the throne forever. You understand? Uh, you disobeyed God. Uh, you understand? Uh, he said, you disobeyed God. Uh, Saul, and you listen to me. You could have been the king forever. But listen, a merciful God. I'm talking about a merciful God. Somebody said he's the God of a, uh, of a second child, of a second chance. He's the God of another chance. All of a sudden, now God, in his mercy, he said, now Samuel, he said, I want you to go and tell Saul that I remember what the Amalekite nation done to the children of Israel when they came up out of the Egypt land. How they laid wait and ambushed her. Children of Israel didn't even do nothing. And they're going to ambush her. He said, I remember what they done. He said, I want you to tell Saul to go down to the Amalekite nation. I want him to kill men. I want him to kill women. I want him to kill babies. I want him to kill sucklings. I don't want him to kill just children. I want him to kill babies that are sucking on the breast. Kill the infants. You understand children of Israel been killing like they killing over in Israel for centuries. They don't kill one thing. They kill anything they got the spirit in. Don't just leave them. I want you to kill their animals. Kill their cows. Kill their sheep. Don't leave nothing alive. Are y'all listening to me? Don't you leave nothing alive. But Saul got the men together and they went down to the Amalekite nation. And when they got down there, the Bible said that they looked and saw the goodling of the flock. Y'all don't kill me. And they stabbed the good little. And they killed everything that was maimed and lame. And that was refuse. Y'all don't kill me. And they kept it and brought it back. And when Saul came back, y'all don't kill me. Came back from the battle of the Amalekites. Y'all got to listen to me. I'm going to be out of your way in a minute. Came back from the battle of the Amalekites. And guess what he did? It would have been one thing if he came back. And just came back quiet. He came back and went parading up and down the street uh, and built him a monument, built him a statue. You understand like he had won, uh, you understand the Super Bowl uh, parading up and down the street. Uh. Oh, but let me tell you something. Uh, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Uh, and you can't fool God no time. While he was up and down the street parading uh, and the people were behind him uh, parading because they felt uh, they had the victory and they were taking these sheep and uh, y'all don't kill me off and up to God. All of a sudden Saul was in prayer and he was praying and God spoke to Saul and to Samuel school spoke to Samuel and said up. He said Samuel it repented me that I ever made Saul king over Israel. He have gone the way you understand of gain. He done disobeyed my word and brought back the Amalekites. So spared them. Disobeyed me. You understand? Samuel went in prayer. There are going to be people praying for you when you're gonna messed up. There's people praying for you. And God said, no, 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 no. Uh-uh, put your sackcloth down. Uh-uh, God, quit praying for him. Uh-uh, 
God forget that. I've rejected him. I've given him an hour. I've given him a space of grace. I've rejected him from being king over Israel. And I've anointed somebody else, a man after my own heart. I give him a chance. I cry out. I spared him and give him an opportunity. I give him your, he should have been messed up, y'all. He should have been messed up a long time ago. You understand? I gave him another chance. And he said, I don't pray for him. I've rejected him. And he rejected me. He rejected me. And I rejected him from being king over Israel. He said, go tell him. So here comes Samuel. You understand the Saul. And Saul, you understand king. You understand first thing. Samuel ain't said nothing. Samuel a seer. Samuel in a realm of God. You understand? There's some folks you can get in their presence. They can look you straight in the eye. And they know exactly where your life is at. Ain't no joke and ain't no playing. They got a gift upon them. They know when you're playing with God. And even though they can keep it sometime God has said, don't you say a word. Don't you speak nothing. Don't even let them know that you know that I know. Don't say a word. Leave them like that. You understand? I want them to think they're getting away. I want them to think if you say something, they might want to repent. I don't want them to repent this time. I don't want them to say they saw them. Act like you don't know nothing. And here comes Samuel and meet Saul. There's a bunch of folk in the church just like that. Meet Saul. And here comes Saul. Hey, 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 man of God. You understand? I've obeyed God. I've obeyed God. Blessed be the Lord thy God, Samuel. I obeyed God. I obeyed. Samuel ain't said nothing. Saul, I obeyed God. All of a sudden, said, Dah. he said, I've obeyed God, Samuel. Some say, move. He said, listen, I've obeyed God, Saul. Samuel looked at him and said, if you obey God, what meaneth this bleeding of Sheba that I hear in my ear? What meaneth this lowing of oxen that I hear in my ear? Call busted. Call busted. But instead of you owning up and saying, it's me, God, we got to come up with an excuse. We got full of excuses. And somebody else, the people, the people took over of your, uh, the, that should, that should have been destroyed, that should have been destroyed, and took it and brought it back to offer up a sacrifice unto the Lord. You understand? For a burnt offering. He said, listen, I've obeyed God. I spared Agag. What? I spared the king. I told you to kill everything. All it takes is for Agag. Do you understand? Did you bring him in the house? Has he been here overnight? It's customary when you bring another king to give him a handmaid. It don't take but one night rendezvous and he'll spawn another Amalekite nation overnight. You understand? You brought this man back in the house and got that seed in the house that I told you to kill. You understand? He said, Saul. He said, I obey God. He said, I offered him. You want to offer him up a sacrifice? He said, Saul, have the Lord delight. You understand? And sacrifices as he does in obedience. You understand? Obedience is better than sacrifice. To Hawking is better than the fat around. He said, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as idolatry and iniquity. He said, Saul, he said, God have ripped the kingdom from you. God then took it from you and then gave it to another man. Watch this here. Saul grabbed Samuel, rent his clothes, grabbed the prophet to his clothes. Samuel took the round and said, Even as you tore my garment, even so God shall tear the kingdom from you. Look at him. You're listening. You come go with me. You understand? I don't care what I done lost. You stand with me. You still go up to the mountain with me. And in the eyes of the people, I want them to still think that God's with me. God done left here. You know how many folks want to come to church and got folks thinking God's with you wearing a cross around your neck. Got a big Bible in your hand and still won't think God's with you. Because you got a title behind your name. You understand that God's with you. He said, you go up to the mountain with me and let the people see you with me. You understand what I mean? But after that day, Samuel came no more. And the Bible said, watch what God did. God never took him from the seat of authority. God never took him out of the pulpit. God never took him out of his office. Never took him from his place. And God said,
sat there, hallelujah, and put an evil, took his good spirit, took the anointing from him, took the anointing from him, and gave him another anointing, put anointing and anointing from him, and gave him another anointing. You understand? This anointing didn't take him out of the pulpit. You understand? He put an evil spirit upon him, not an evil spirit from the from hell, not an evil spirit from the devil, but an evil spirit from God came up on Saul and his men that were close to him saw the evil spirit and say, let us call for somebody with the anointed. Let us call for somebody with a yoke breaking power to try to get the devil off of him. Are y'all listening to me today? You got to pay attention. And they called David into the house to play on his harp to calm Saul down. Watch this. And the Bible said, and an evil spirit came upon Saul and he prophesied. What do you mean, brother preacher? This man was still in the pulpit. This man was still prophesying. He was still operating. And he had a demon upon him. We in an hour now that if you ain't got discernment, he's telling you, you can do whatever you want to do. And Deuteronomy 13 and 1, if a prophet or a dreamer come and prophesy to you, and the thing come to pass, which they said, you understand, and they tell you to go serve other gods. He said, don't hearken until the voice of that prophet. You mean to tell me, if a man prophesied to me and the thing come to pass, everything he says, but the next word he says, let's leave God. Let's walk away from his instruction. Let's leave the word. He said, don't hearken to that prophet. He said, it's me. I'm doing this. I put that spirit on that prophet to try you, to see what's in your heart, to see if you love me with all your heart. I'm going to let them lie to you. I'm going to let them prophesy and let the stuff come to pass. You understand what I mean? And I'm going to see if they can turn you away from the true and the living God. Because the booker told me I'm going to get a car and I got it. Because they told me I'm going to get a promotion on my job and I got it. So the next thing they tell me, I ain't got to live holy. I ain't got to walk holy. I ain't got to repent no more. I ain't got to do this no more. And now because the first part was right, I believe the next part. Uh-uh. I don't care what you said. God's word is forever settled in the heaven and the scriptures cannot be broken. Now y'all listen to me today. Let God be true and every man be a liar. You understand? I don't care what you prophesy. You can call fire down by you. You can call fire down out of heaven. It don't make no difference. But you ain't taking me from the word. You ain't taking me from the word because your little prophecy is temporary. I need a word from the Lord. I need that everlasting word that's forever settled in the heaven. I need that word when you ain't here, prophet. I need that word when you ain't here, prophet. I need that word to be able to be there for me. That word that's my shield and my buckler. I can't let you cause me to walk away from God because if you get me out of location, I don't have nothing to defeat the devil. Y'all don't hear me. The devil is darkness. He's the rule of the power of darkness. He's a prince of power. And I can't whip him with flesh and blood. I can't whip him with philosophy. I can't whip him with theory. I can't whip him with eschatology. Only way I can whip the devil. I got to whip him with the word. I got to take the shield of faith. I got to take the sword of the spirit in order to whip the devil. Only weapon that I got is thus saith the Lord. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will lift up a standard against the devil, not by power, but by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I need the spirit. God's a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. There's spirit and in truth. There's a spirit of delusion upon people that got these folks feel like they can walk away from the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. You said to play with God and don't even know it. You can't whoop the devil. The devil will have you and you don't even know it. The prayer of God, listen, God will put a spirit upon you and you think you flow with God. God will let you have a house. God will give you money. God will put more money in your bank account than you ever imagined. God will give you a new car. God will give you a promotion. God will give you the most handsome husband, the finest wife, the most beautiful kids, and sin will give you a delusion and make you think, you understand, that what you got is something, what 
does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What can a man possibly give in exchange for his own soul? Life does not consist of the abundance of things that a man possess. You got money, you got a job, and they got no peace. You got money, you got a job, but you still a whore. You still a whore monger, because you got something driving you. You got something driving you, because you can't get no peace. You can't get no joy. You got something driving you. I'm telling God tonight, if I ain't got two pennies to work together, let me have the Holy Ghost. Let me have the monitor. Let me have the anointed. If I ain't got nothing, Lord, I need your peace of mind. I need your protection now. In an hour like this, when there's demons everywhere, you can wake up with a bank account full of money. You can wake up in a, in a brand new home. You can wake up with cars in the garage. If you ain't careful, a demon of depression will grab a hold of you. Yeah, I have you in the garage crying. Yeah, I have you messed up sitting in one of them cars and just weeping and saying, my God, you understand? I'm still not happy. I'm still not happy. You understand? I don't care. Let me have Jesus. You can take it all. I know you hear me. I've been broke before. You understand what I mean? And what I'm telling you, it don't mean nothing. I don't care what you got. If you lose God, you done lost it all. There's a spirit in the land. And folk, they got y'all thinking that money is success. That money is God. That drug dealer got money. That prostitute got money. You understand? These folk in Hollywood got money. You understand? That don't mean nothing. You know what I want? I want the true riches of God. You know what I want? I want that real anointing. You know what I want? I want that money came by. I want the peace of mind. I want that joy divine. I want the God's protection. I want God's wisdom. I want God's knowledge. Y'all don't kill me. I want to be able to lay down in peace. I want to be able to lay down and know that, God, that demons can do nothing to me because I got angels that count round about me. You know what I want? If I don't get no money, give me the Holy Ghost. Give me your presence, God. In the presence of God is the fullness of joy. In the presence of God is your healing. In the presence of God is your power. In the presence of God is your health. It's your joy. It's your life. It ain't in your car. It ain't in your money. It ain't in your job. It's in the Holy Ghost. What does it profit a man? I'm telling God, take it all. And whatever you do, Take not your Holy Spirit. Take it not away, Lord. Don't send me a spirit of delusion. Don't make me feel like my money is salvation. Don't let me feel like my promotion is salvation. Don't let me feel like my house and my car and my little clothes is salvation. Give me the real anointing. Give me the real power. Give me the real peace. Give me the real joy. Give me the real health. Give me the real happiness. Give me the real anointing. Give it to me. Give it to me, my Give it to me. Y'all don't give me what I'm saying. Give it to me, Lord. Give it to me, Lord. You got these young folk. Young folk. You ain't got no business word. You ain't got no business. You ain't paying a bill. You ain't doing nothing. But you young folk, you gotta smoke weed. You gotta set up and go get high. Cause you don't have no peace. You gotta just set up and set it around. After you done got high and it feel like it done cut, cut your feet. Your altar, and now you're depressed and don't feel like you want to live like the whole world is against you in the world you ain't nothing but children there's demons and they have no respect to person they have no respect to person and demons are going in and getting a grown man getting a grown man and make him rape and make him rape a six month old baby you understand a demon to get in a man and make him rape a six month old baby and bust a wound up in a and kill her. You understand? Not with a weapon or with his own private part. You understand? Demons ain't got no respect to person. They'll kill babies. They're going after your children. They're going after your loved ones. That's why I'm crying out to God. You understand what I'm saying? I want the anointing upon me. I want the anointing upon me. I want that glory upon me. You understand? I want a blessing upon me. It can come upon my children. There's some of y'all tonight. You're the only reason your children are blessed. 
You're the only reason why your children ain't already done got killed. You're the only reason why your babies are not dead already. Why they ain't lost their life and they lost their mind already. You're the one. He said, I'll bless the fruit of your body. I'll bless your children. I'll bless your coming in. I'll bless your going out. And you don't know it. I got my hand on your children. They think they blessed. They don't know that the blessing upon them is from you. Because you're crying all night long. God spared my baby. Crying all night long. Lord, prosper him. Crying all night long. Lord, don't let the devil have him. Crying all night long. And the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. God heard your prayer. And God sent an angel around your children. And I'm telling God tonight, help me to stay safe. If it ain't for nobody, for my children, for my grandbabies, for the church, God please let me be an intercessor let me be one of those that are staying in the gap let me be one of those that are staying in the gap let me be one of those talk about a bit. let me be one of those that was staying in the gap are y'all listening to me let me be one of those you understand we're in the hour now there's a spirit of delusion there's lying spirits you got what I'm saying you understand when he told Saul you understand Ahab Ahab wanted to go up to Ram of Gideon but he had a friend another king by the name of Jehoshaphat you understand and he told Jehoshaphat Jehoshaphat said, my people, as your people, my army, as your army. He said, but Ahab, Ahab said, Jehoshaphat, let's go up to Ram of Gilead and let us take it. For they're small people. And Jehoshaphat said, let's inquire of the Lord. Well, Ahab was married to a woman named Jezebel. She had 400, 450 prophets of gold and 400 prophets of Baal. 850 prophets sitting at her table. And she was feeding her. And they went to prophesy. And what they're saying, they have go up. For God shall deliver into your hand. Go up, Ahab. For the Lord shall deliver. Ahab shall deliver. You understand? Reign of Gilead into your hand. You understand? But Jehoshaphat said, hold it. Something is wrong here. Is there another prophet besides these? He said, yes. It's one Micaiah. And I hate him. Because he don't never prophesy nothing good. I hate him. He said, don't say that. We will not sit down till he come. He said, go get him. The other prophets went to go get him. And they said, Micaiah, listen, everybody has prophesied good concerning the king. I want you to be as everybody else of the same mouth. You say the same thing. He said, as the Lord thy God giveth, as the Lord thy God liveth, I will speak only what the Lord and gave me. And when he got to, my, to Ahab, Ahab prophet said, Micaiah, shall we go up to Ram of Gilead? Micaiah said, yeah, go ahead. God shall deliver it in your hand. Ahab said, now listen, how many times have I adjured thee in the name of the Lord to speak nothing but the truth? He said, listen, you want the truth? I'll tell you the truth. I saw all Israel being scattered like sheep without a shepherd. I saw every man going back to his own house without a captain. He turned around and told Jehoshaphat, you see, he don't speak no good but evil concerning him. Brother Micaiah backed up and said, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. You understand? And the host of heaven angels standing all around him. And God said, who shall persuade Ahab to go up to Ram of Gilead? One set on this manner and another set on that manner. And there stood a spirit in heaven, not from hell. When God gonna get you, he gonna make sure when I get you, ain't nobody gonna be able to tell you it ain't me. Ain't nobody gonna be able to tell you because I'm gonna send it with a heavenly host. I'm gonna send it with a presence on it. Ain't nobody gonna be able to convince you that this ain't God. You understand? He said, I'll persuade you. He said, how? He said, I'm gonna be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. He said, go, for thou shalt prevail. Now, now, the Lord have put a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. God did it. God did it. God put a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. God took Samuel. 
You understand? God took Saul and put an evil spirit upon Saul. God did that. God put an evil spirit upon his prophet. God put an evil spirit upon his kings. God put an evil spirit upon his folks. These were folks that were once walked in a realm of God. They have as a backslidden preacher that once walked in a realm of God and he married a whore of another nation. When I told you to not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, understand? He disobeyed obey me. You understand a backslidden preacher. Look what God done. Well, let me tell you something. How the Bible said now, in this hour now, you remember something. I'm just saying, yesterday, the day of evermore. If I put a spirit of delusion upon a man, if I put a lying spirit upon a man, if I done it once, I'll do it again. I'm the same. Yesterday, the day of evermore. You think you're going to set up and play with me after I done sent you how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, you understand? If they died without mercy or under the two or three witnesses when they disobeyed the laws of Moses, how much so a punishment suppose ye that have trampled under your feet the Son of God and counted the blood of the covenant, you understand? As something unholy and then despite until the spirit of grace, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I sent my son to shed his blood for your salvation. I sent my son to go to hell in your place and rise for your justification. I sent my son to die for you and then send his spirit back into your heart. I sent him to be brutalized. I sent him to be tortured. I sent him to be beat and whipped for your sake. He was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquities and the chastisement of our pieces upon him. And with his stripes were healed. He was smitten of God and it pleased God to bruise him for your sake for your sake he laid upon him the sin of us all he became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God through him he paid the price over 2,000 years ago for you to sit down and tremble it like it ain't nothing you understand it don't mean nothing I died for you I shed my blood I opened up a door so you could have a right to the tree of life and then I sent my spirit so I can keep you. I sent a keeper for you. I sent my son. I sent everything. I gave you love to love me. I gave you faith to believe in me. You understand? I give to every man a measure of faith. I give you the Holy Ghost, which is the love of God that's shed abroad in your heart. I give you love to love me. I give you faith to believe in me. I did this, and this is what I get in return. This is what I get in return. Are y'all listening to me today? This is what I get in return. Now y'all to turn your back on me and let a bunch of folk tell you. Let a bunch of folk tell y'all that you ain't got to live holy. Tell a bunch of folk tell y'all that you can live any kind of way. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? And grace may abound. God forbid that you got a bunch of folk that crept in on the wares. Crept in in our pulpit. And crept in our Bible studies. And crept in our seminars. And crept in your social media. And turned the grace of God in the lascivious. Giving folk a license to seeing uh, Are y'all listening to me? Giving folk uh, a license to sin. I'm almost through. I ain't trying to entertain their body. Uh, you might be to the point uh, of no return. Uh, you might be setting up in here today. Uh, uh, no matter how I'm preaching, uh, you go home uh, and treat your husband any kind of way. Uh, you go home uh, and treat your wife any kind of way. Uh, you set up my God. Uh, still full of lust as a dog is pleased. Uh, but you in the church. Uh, you understand? Uh, you still got a little woman on the side. Uh, you still got a man. Uh, beautiful wife. Handsome husband. Good wife, good husband, and a demon upon you. But you come in the church like ain't nothing. But be sure your sin is going to find you out. What's done in darkness is going to be brought to the light. What's spoken in secret in the closet is going to be proclaimed on the house tower. You understand? The eyes of the Lord are going to and fro. You understand? The holy, the evil, and the good. The night is as day unto the Lord. If I cover up my head, my feet go show 
feet up. If I cover my feet up, my head goes show up. Whether shall I go to flee from the presence of the Lord? If I take and make my bed up in hell, he will meet me there. If I take and flee to the uttermost parts of the sea, he said, Thou art there. Whether shall you go to flee from the presence of the Lord? I know you. I know your thoughts are far off. I know your thoughts are far off. I know you're down sitting. I know you're uprising. I know you're coming in. I know you're going out. And you think you can get by me? You think you got it? Well, let me tell you what I'll do. I'll let you think you done got away. I'll let you think you done got by. I'll leave you on your instrument. I'll leave you on the praise team. I'll leave you on the usher board. I'll leave you preaching and quoting scriptures and not addressing a thing on the inside. I'm looking for somebody to be real. I'm looking for somebody today that will say, Lord, after a message like this, I don't want to spill the delusion. Shine the light, Lord. I can't afford to be caught with my works undone. No man know the day nor the hour when the Lord shall come. Not the, not the son, nobody but the father. You understand? No man know the day or the hour when the son of God shall come, when the son of man shall come. Well, guess what, y'all? You may not know the day or the hour when Jesus is coming, but you still don't know the day or the hour when you got to go. You don't know today when this next minute you got to go. And if you got to go, whether you lift up your eyes, hell is a place of torment. If you ever had a demon on you, you'll think of your worst pain, think of your worst anguish, think of your worst nightmare, think of your worst torture, think of your worst torment, and think about it. On earth, you got folk praying for you. On earth, you can run up in the church. On earth, you can go to the doctor. On earth, you can take some pills. On earth, you can take some morphine. On earth, you can drink a bottle of liquor. On earth, you understand what I mean? You can go to a club on earth and think about going to hell. But there's no God, there's no prayer meeting, there's nobody to tell the devil what to do, when to do, and how long to do it. And you'll be there forever, tormented in the flame. Hell is real. If you ever had a demon, hell is real. If you ever had a spirit in you, these young folk, these demons will torment you. These demons will drive you and make you take a pistol and blow your brains out. They take you make a take a razor blade. They cut your wrist. They make you take an overdose of pills. They make you do stuff. They make you turn your body and make you be a whore. You understand? They make you be a whore. They put you on the street and turn you into a hobo. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm telling God tonight, God, please, please, you done gave me a chance. Please, you done snatched me out of the hands of the devil. Please, keep me now. Please, don't leave me, Lord. Please, don't let the devil have me. Please, I can't think of it. I can't imagine how the devil grabbing me again. Because I know I'm to the point of no return. I know I ain't got another chance. I know I'm not preaching like a preacher. I'm not preaching to hurt you. I'm not preaching to be self-righteous. I'm preaching for my soul. And I'm preaching to snatch your soul out of hell. I'm preaching so your blood may be on my hand. If you don't want it, it ain't because I ain't telling you. I'm telling you, he died for you. I'm telling you, you ain't got to die like that. I'm telling you, he'll give you strength that you can live right, that you can walk right, that you can talk right. He'll give you strength. You don't have no excuse. Let the weak say that I'm strong, that I'm weak. That's what I'm strong. He's the saving strength of his anointing. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Lord of the strength of my life, who shall I be afraid of? You understand me? I'm telling you, how shall you escape? I'm sending you a word. 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 But you pray him at me. You pray him at that alcohol. You pray him at that whore. You pray him at that home hunger. You pray him at that little slick dude. You pray him at that little sugar mama. You pray him at that fast at him. You understand? You pray him. You pray him at them drugs. You pray him. You pray him at it. You pray him at that social media. You pray him at TikTok. You pray him at that porno. You pray him at it. The demons. 
are coming out to do. I told you, I'm letting them go. Darkness gonna cover the earth. I'm letting the demons loose. They're coming out of a bottle of alcohol. They're coming out of a joint of weed. They're coming through some sex. They're coming through porn. They're gonna come out your cell phone. They're gonna come out your laptop. They're coming. They're coming in the church. They're coming through a song. Y'all don't care about them saying. They're gonna come through a movie. You better hear me. They're coming. And if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, if you ain't got a conviction, if you ain't got a cry, I'm telling God tonight. I said, put your anointed upon me, Lord. Put conviction back in my heart. Put a cry back in me. Put that conviction in me. Let the least thing that make me cry. Let the least thing that make me repent. Let the least thing that make me say I'm sorry. Let the least thing I could think of something and say I'm sorry. I could dream of something and say I'm sorry. Y'all don't kill me. I can look the wrong way and say I'm sorry. Put conviction back on me. Oh, let me get caught up with my works and down. I don't care if I got to repent all day long. I don't care if I got to say I'm sorry all day long. God, please, you said if I repent, you said if I confess my sin, that you're faithful and you're just to forgive me and cleanse me. You just won't forgive me. You'll get that demon off of me. You just won't forgive me. You'll get that spirit out of me. You just won't forgive me. You'll get it off of me. You just won't forgive me. You'll get it off of me. Create in me, Lord, a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. You better help me. God, what you do. Please, you reject me. Don't reject it. Don't reject it. You send in the world that can heal you. You send in the world that can deliver you. You send in the world that can break a chain. You send in the world that can heal you. You send in the world that can open the prison doors. Don't reject it. Don't reject the truth. Tell him, Lord, give me a love for the truth. Give me a love for the truth. Because if you don't love it, I'm going to do something to you. Because you don't want me. I turn you over to a reprobate mind. Because you don't love me. I tell you what I do. I'll turn you over to a I give you over to a strong delusion. I put some upon you. There's folk that you can't even preach to them no more. They got something on me that make them think they're right. That they can be in the club. That they can be in the church. That they can be a whore. That they can be a home mother. They can be a homosexual. They can be a lesbian. They can be a liar. They can be a thief. They can be proud. They can be arrogant. They can be disobedient. And yet make it into heaven. You can't tell them that they need to repent. You can't tell them that they're wrong. You can't tell them that something is wrong. You can't even correct them. They got a delusion on them. They make them think they're all right. Because some preacher that told him that they don't got to repent. Some preacher that told him that they ain't going to hell. Some preacher that told him that hell ain't even real. But let me tell you something. If there's a heaven, there's a hell. If there's a top, there's a bottom. If there's a good, there's a evil. If there's a God. There's a devil. Are y'all listening to me today? And you're going to have to hear me. You're going to have to listen to me today. You're going to have to listen. You better go to crying out to God. And some of you right now, you just close to a delusion. You just close to a reprobate. I don't care what I'm preaching. It don't matter. Used to be a time tears would go to rolling down your face. Used to be a time you'd be checking yourself and say, Lord, it's not my brother nor my sister. It ain't my mother nor my father. It ain't my husband. It ain't my wife. It's me, oh God, that stands in the need of prayer while I'm preaching. As some of y'all used to be saying, search me, Lord. But now, you don't feel nothing. Now, there's no conviction. Now, it ain't no cry. Now, ain't no more tears. I'm now under those of a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. I'm there. I'm answering your tears. I'm answering your tears. I'm going to interpret your tears. As some of y'all say, you can't open your mouth. Your tears are saying, I'm so sorry. Your tears are saying, don't let me die like a fool. Your tears are saying, I don't come too far to turn around now. Your tears are saying, I love you more than anything. Your tears are saying, give me strength to hold on. I'm the only one in my house that's holding on. Help me, Lord. Your tears are saying, God, please give me strength. Hold my hand. Please, don't let the devil go out here. Please, don't let this house, don't let this money, don't let a woman, don't let a man, don't let it blind me. God, send your anointing, send your glory. I'll put 
some upon you. I'll put some upon you, young lady. I'll put some upon you, young man. I'll put some upon you. Hey, sitting around this church world got y'all thinking you can live any kind of way. If he destroyed him for sin, if he opened up the earth and swallowed up 23,000 fornicators, if he took fire and brimstone and burnt up two whole cities of proud and arrogant, perverted people, if he took and sent snake into the camp and let him bite not the world but the church, he let him kill the church. He said, you playing with me. Judgment will first begin at the house. And it's going to begin with my elders. It's going to be begin with the head. And I'm coming down. God spoke to me and told me somebody real influential in this ministry. Something going to happen to them. When the Lord spoke to me and he said it's going to be an example. It's going to shake this ministry up. He said, you're playing with me. I went to praying for different ones, praying for my kids, praying for your children. I went to crying out to God. He spoke to me and said, this election is going to be horrific. You ain't never heard me just use the word horrific. He speaks to me and he tells me words. He says, it's going to be horrific. This election is going to come like COVID-19. It's going to come with a demon of fear. And if you ain't got God, you're going to have to have G-O-D. You don't understand. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And every nation that done forgot God preaches. How many preachers is preaching the scriptures now? How many preachers now? How many folk you got now crying? How many folk right now that ain't worried about membership? Somebody get a bunch of folk like it is in here, packed out in here. They said, no, just go, just go to preaching about money and prosperity. You get ready to run everybody off. Yeah, you get ready to run the hypocrites. You get ready to run sinners because the unclean ain't going to be able to stand. It shall be called a way, a highway of holiness. A fool can't even air that in. He can't even wonder in here. There's getting ready to be an anointing up in this place. The folk coming up in here with the wrong spirit. You ain't coming up here with the right spirit. God say, I told them one time. I was down in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I told them, you can't keep playing. I said, can't keep playing. Coming up here playing. Setting up with all kind of spirits. Lady come up in here and that church was squirming like a snake. I told him, you better pray. I said, you better pray. I said, you better pray. I said, y'all better pray. Went to praying, that devil come out. I told them, y'all was them and you were there. I told him, you pray. I watched that demon, Brother Paul, come out of that man, that woman's mouth and went to the back of the church and hit one of them women that you had been in church. Turned that woman, flipped that woman. Y'all was there. Y'all was there, Sister Devil. Y'all was there, watched that demon. I told him, I said, you're going to be in deliverance. This ain't regular. This ain't regular. This deliverance. What I'm preaching, demons are leaving. Demons are, demons are jumping and, and, and sliding and running. And they're going everywhere, but there's no anointing. They're going everywhere, but there's no sincerity. They're going everywhere without God's protection. That demon jumped up on that woman and flipped that woman so many times in that back. Messed that woman up. That woman ain't never got delivered. Call me now, still messed up. Still messed up. Still ain't got back to God. In the back there, in the back of that church, when I told them, don't play. When I told them, don't play. That spirit come out of that woman, and y'all was sitting right there, that demon tore that woman up. And you want to set up and play like they ain't real. You play by yourself. I'll put something up on you. You keep playing with me. I leave you singing, I leave you preaching, I leave you operating, I leave you playing, I leave you preaching. I put some up on you and you will never know it's there. 
God spoke something so scary to me to this day. It still rings in my ears. He said, there's a lie that can be told that only I, God, can tell you it's not the truth. Do you understand there's a lie that you can be walking in and you don't have a clue that it's not the truth? Stand on your feet. Got to be still. Today, I mean, uh, this may not be your last day. This may not be your last service. But it could be your last time being able to connect to God. This may not be your last time you sing on the praise team. May not be the last time you tickle that ivory. May not be the last time you hit them strings. Hit them keys. Play them drums. Play that guitar. May not be the last time you work them buttons. May not be the last time you work with them cooking utensils. May not be the last time you put on your white pastor's aid and your black usher robe. But this may be the last time that you be connected. It's a sad thing to be on the throne and have something on you so cold-blooded. And at the end of the day, it drove him to the very thing that he used to be against. Stuff that he once stood against, it drove him back. The very witches that ran from him, he was running to them trying to get help. And eventually, a demon got up on him and made him fall on his own sword. Kill himself. I'll let you go. Young people, you ride them down the street with these phones. Ride them down the street. How many times you done almost had a wreck and God spared you? How many times you done set up? How many times you done been sick and ain't told your mama and ain't told your daddy? And eventually God bring you out. How many times you set up there and had that thing, that spirit jump up on your mind? And make you feel like life was over and everything you've ever done. It was to no avail. And a spirit of discouragement, a spirit of depression come upon you. A spirit of suicide make you feel like life ain't even worth living. And you ain't even started your life. They there. It's okay. You don't have to hear nothing I say. You will though. You watch America. See what I'm preaching? They'll have to come to get peace. They'll have to come for protection. They'll have to come to get delivered. There's an anointing getting ready to hit. There's an anointing going to hit this ministry, going to hit not just this ministry, everyone that's crying out. There's people that's crying out like Brother McCoy. I got 7,000 men that have not bowed to the image of Baal. Not bowed to Baal, nor kissed his image. I got folk in reserve waiting on that day. Lord, whatever you do, don't let me miss my visitation. Do you have a delusion? Have he turned you over where you can't, no matter how I preach, you can't stop? No matter how I preach, you can't quit? You don't know how to speak no on that phone. You don't know how to delete that number. You don't know how to not unlock that door at late night. You don't know how to not cut that iPad off, that phone off, and no more ticket, no more talking, no more porno. You don't know it's, I'm, I'm talking about, there's a spirit of racism there's a spirit of racism on the internet. There's a spirit of racism on the internet. You can't play with it. There's a spirit that'll make you start hating people and you don't even, it's a spirit jumping on people. There's a racist demon. It's the way they got this thing set up. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Don't be lying. 
It's a racist spirit. They come and God let them come. And they going everywhere. But folks have no defense. They come in. What do you have to stop them? You playing with them. You answering to them. There's no more loyalty. No more truth. If you're in this building tonight, I'm not telling you to run to the altar. But you better run somewhere. If you got to run in the kitchen, you got to run out in your car. If you got to run, I'm telling you, you better run somewhere. You better run somewhere as quick as you can get to the altar. Some of you done played too long. You better cry out to God with your whole heart, Trevor Allen. You better cry out to God with your whole heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, Trevor Allen. Lord, I'm asking you for a divine miracle, God. Lord, I pray, God, right now, send an anointed up in this place, Lord. Lord, I want you to touch that live stream, God, this folks right now. I pray, Lord, that you ain't got, that you ain't sent a delusion up on us, God. God, please, God, this folks right now, no matter how you preach to them, these preachers have convinced them that they can be in these clubs, that they can be in the streets. They have convinced them, Lord, that they can be whores and homongers. They can be liars. They can be homosexuals and lesbians and still be in God's kingdom, Lord. You said the people that do this shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You said the people that do this, the wrath of God shall come upon them. You said, God, that they that do this shall not inherit your kingdom, Lord. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, God. They won't be able to get your spirit, Lord. And he that hath not the spirit of Christ is none of his. You said our spirit bears with, with your spirit that we are the children, Lord. Only thank God that the devil going to recognize us the Holy Ghost, God. When he come by and see us marked and see us sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, Lord. You said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal. That you know of them that are yours, Lord. And every man that nameth your name, let him depart from iniquity. They ain't depart from iniquity. They giving folk license. They tell them it's okay. It's all right to do it. It's all right to sin. It's all right to go to clubs. It's all right to drink. It's all right to smoke. It's all right to be perverted because Christ have died for you and he paid it. But they failed to tell him that if they willfully sin after they've come into the knowledge of the truth if they remain of the most sacrifice for them but a fearful look into it, the indignation and the wrath of God that comes upon the children of disobedience. They didn't tell them Lord that the wages of sin is death. They didn't tell them Lord that he that sinneth is of the devil Lord. They did not tell them, Lord. They didn't tell them, Lord, about, Lord, that strong delusion, Lord. They didn't tell them, Lord. They didn't tell them, Lord, about that strong delusion, Lord. They didn't tell them about sin. They didn't tell them, Lord, if they've been enlightened. It's impossible for those that have once been enlightened and have tasted of the powers of the world to come, have been partake of the Holy Ghost, tasted the word, and witnessed the powers of the world to come, for them to be restored, it's impossible, Lord. If they fall away, God. People talking about once saved, always saved. It ain't like that. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Judas was part of the ministry. He was part of the bishopric. He said his name was written in the book of life. But God blotted it out. He said, I will blot your name out. God, please, God, don't blot my name out, Lord. God, please, God, put that cry. Folk don't even cry no more. Because they don't believe that nothing's going to happen. It done already, you don't believe it's going to happen. It done already happened. Your unbelief is the thing that gets you. Cry out to God. Tell him, resurrect my faith, Lord. Increase my faith, Lord. Help out my unbelief, Lord. You said the fearful and the unbeliever and the abominable and the homemongers and all lies, the idolatry. Y'all have said, they have their part in the lake that burneth with fine brimstone. They ain't preaching this no more. Ain't nobody going to hell. Ain't nobody going to feel the wrath of God. God, you told us in the word that because they failed to retain you and their knowledge, you turned them over to a reprobate mind. You gave them over to do the things which are not convenient, Lord. You gave them over man with a man, a woman with a woman. You turned them over to an ultimate lie. God, for a man to think he's a woman and a woman to think she's a man. God, they're doing it today in the pulpits, God. 
God they done turned the grace of God in the last sentences and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ he's not a master no more if he was they wouldn't live they couldn't do what they wanted to do Lord God please Lord not my will but thy will be done please God I don't know what to do I don't know where to go God hold my hand Lord God don't let me die like this I can't help myself Lord please Jesus give me the mind Lord please Jesus help me Lord please Jesus give us the strength Lord please Jesus give us the heart to want to do right Lord please Jesus give me the strength to make the decision that I need to make Lord don't let me cause nobody to die because if I'm providential if you got me for a day I can cause a woman to die I can cause a man to die because he let them get in the way of your predestinated plan please Jesus help me to make the decision because if I don't make it you'll make it for me God and that ain't going to be nice please Jesus please help me Lord help me Lord get this homemonging spirit off of here get this perverted spirit off of here get this lust off of here get this pride get this arrogant spirit get it off of me Lord get these lying demons out of here get it off Lord get these joking and jesting get these talking too much demons get them off Lord get these spirits of hatred get this racist spirit get it off get it out of me Lord take it off Lord cry out to God cry out to God call upon him all God help me don't let me desert my children don't let me abandon my children if I walk away from you my children ain't got a covenant man cry out to God you walk away from God your children ain't got a covenant your wife cry out to God tell him Lord watch over these women and these men don't want to be men watch over these men and their wife don't want to be help me watch over them watch over them Jesus watch over them Jesus watch over them You better cry out to God. You better cry out to God. This might be your last cry. You done heard Brother McCoy say it over and over. Cause you waiting on to die. You waiting on a car wreck. You waiting on some hideous disease. I ain't got to let you have a car wreck. I ain't got to let you lose your job. I ain't got to let you catch a disease. I can leave you like you are. And put something upon you. Leave you in the same position. Leave you right there in the church. Leave you getting a, a tithing envelope. And you don't even know you'd have been cut off. Saul never knew what hit him. God don't let me be like Samson. He knew not that the spirit of God had departed from him. Don't let me be like Solomon. God don't give me everything. Don't let me have no war. He didn't have no war. He didn't have no sickness. But you left him, Lord. You didn't even send a prophet to him. You didn't send no hurt. You didn't send no chastisement. God, please, don't do me like you did Solomon. Please. Please send a word. Chase me, Lord. Open my sin. Open it up that I can cry now. Open it up that I can cry now. God, don't leave me. And I stand before you in judgment. And you tell me to depart. Get me now that I can cry. Get me now that I can call upon you. Get me now that I can say help me. Get me now, Lord. Open my sin now. Open me up now, Lord. Open me up now, Lord. Open me up now, Lord. Open me up now. Open me up, Jesus. Y'all know better. Some of you know better. You done gone to these churches and they done gave you a license. You done gone to these churches and they done put the super glue on you and make you think you can dress like you want to dress. You can live like you want to. Go back to idolatry. Go back to your pagan holidays. You think you can go back like it ain't nothing. It's the spirit of idolatry. You didn't see the spirit. You didn't see the spirit. All they told you was a preacher like me is bondage. All they told you a preacher like me is cultism. All they told you a preacher like me is legalism. But they didn't know that a preacher like me is going to protect you from the demons of hell. A preacher like me is going to keep you 
will help you to get keep from getting possessed by demons. A preacher like me is going to cut the lights on to get the devil off of you, to get it out your marriage, to get it off your children, to get it out of your body. Send a word to hell. Send a word to hell. The light, cut the light on. The interest of the, of the word giveth light. The interest of the word giveth light. Send the light, Lord. Light it up, Brother McCoy. Light it up. I got stuff in me I can't see. Light it up, Brother McCoy. I got stuff on me that I don't even know about. Light it up, Brother McCoy. I got stuff crawling in me. I don't even know it's there. Light it up. Light it up. Oh, let me have something taking my soul to hell. And I don't even know it. Father, please. Oh, put a strong delusion on me. Young man and woman, I'm giving you a chance. You playing with me. Preacher, I'm giving you a chance. They don't see you, but I see you. Prophetess, they don't see you. I see you. Call on me while you can. Seek me while I may be found. Because there's going to be a day you ain't going to find me. Call upon me while I'm near. I'm right here. My presence is here to heal. The power of God's here to heal. Call upon me. 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 Please, God, put the cry back in our soul. God, they say we're not growing. God, they know that God, I'm crying. They don't know how hell is real. If they know hell was real, they would be weeping, Lord, hold us. Somebody told them they can live any kind of way. They can disobey God, do whatever they want to do. God looking for a yes man. God looking for somebody that would do his will, that would do always the things that please him. God looking for a vessel, a willing, yielding vessel. God looking for the sons of God that are being led by him that he can tell them what to do where to go, what to wear what to say, what to eat, what to give I'm looking for somebody that will listen to me and do like I tell them church do whatever they want to do I only get a Holy Ghost to them that will obey me I only get a Holy Ghost to them that obey me. No man can call Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost, sweet. Oh, nothing more, 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 Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, help me, Lord, please. Help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, 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 help me, you gonna shut this nation down, Jesus. You gonna shut it down. You gonna shut it down. God, we depending on man. We caught up in idolatry, Lord. We done left you, Lord. We come to church and tell you what to do, Jesus. We walk away from your word. It don't mean that no more. We ain't got to do that no more. Who gave you the right to say what God don't want you to do if it's written? Father, help me, Lord. If don't nobody want to obey you, help us to save ourselves, Lord. If they don't want to obey you, they're going to find out them demons. Some of them get demons that's already in their home and they already done jumped on their bodies. God, they used to be able to trust you, be able to take your word. They didn't have no faith, Lord. 
They don't have no faith no more. God, no more faith, Lord. No more faith, Lord. They don't even trust you no more, Jesus. God, they can't walk away from you and go forward in you. They don't know. They don't know, God. They don't know. I want you to stand on your feet all over this building with your head bowed and your eyes closed. Oh, bow your head and close your eyes and say, Lord, I'm not even worthy. God, I'm not worthy. I just need you, Lord. Please help me. God, I'm messed up, and I know I'm messed up, Lord. I'm tired of being a hypocrite. I'm tired of faking. You've been too good to me. You've been too good. You done brought me from death's door too many times. God, I done crawled out the grave. I don't know how many times you've been good to me, Jesus. And this is what I give you every time. Out of all the times you'd have brought me out of intensive care, all the times I should have lost my mind, this is what I give you in return. All the time when I was up under demonic attack, Lord, it felt like I was about to lose it. You came in, and this is what I give you in return. Oh, you, Lord, my life, Lord, give me strength. Give me strength. Strengthen me. That's all some of us need is strength. Strengthen me to keep going. Strengthen me, Lord, please. Strengthen me. Strengthen my body. Strengthen my mind. Strengthen my soul. Please help me. Please, Jesus. Please don't let me be afraid to die for your name's sake. Don't let me be afraid to go to jail for your name's sake. Don't let me be afraid to be rejected and despised for your name's sake, Jesus. Don't let me be afraid, Jesus. Don't let me be afraid, Jesus. Don't let me be ashamed of you. Don't let me be ashamed of you. Grab somebody by the hand. Just scoot over next to somebody. Grab them by the hand. Standing on your feet all over this building. Everybody, children, everybody, keep playing with it. Everybody, please stand. Grab somebody by the hand. Ain't no time to play. You watch. It's going to be somebody going to shake somebody up. It's going to shake somebody up. Some of you young folk going to make y'all scream. You're going to let folk know God ain't playing. Please, God, spare my babies. Spare my babies. Spare my babies. Call upon him. Say, Lord, help me. Just tell him, Lord, help me. I don't want to be like this. Just tell me, Lord, I don't want to be like this. Just call up on him. Just tell him, I don't want to be like this, please. God, I don't want nothing running in and out of my life. I'm tired of spirits taking control of me, Jesus. Tell him, I don't want to be like this. Tell him, Lord, please don't let him take my mind, Jesus. Don't let him take control of me, Jesus. God, they done had it before. I don't want them to get me again, Jesus. They done had me weeping and crying before, Jesus. Have mercy upon me, Lord. 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 Lord, while you got that hand, while you got that hand, some of you being healed. While you got that hand, some of you being delivered. It's all right. You think this is a joke. You young people, he going to make some of you young folks scream. You don't want to cry now. He got a way of making you scream. I get more calls from young folk just screaming at night. Stuff be done attack them. Yes, okay. You don't care nothing about your house, your car, your money, your job, your your status. He don't care nothing about it. He's coming. No, he ain't coming. He's already here. And you might not even know what he done already done. You might not even know what he done already done. You might not know. What he done already done. 
Father, I ask your blessings upon these people, upon the live stream. Touch the hearts and the minds of these people. Now, Father, we shouted. We had a wonderful praise team, but they didn't know this was coming. You warning your people, Lord. You warning your people. It's God, you told me when these kind of messages come forth. Warning, you sent a warning that something is coming behind it. When you start warning your people, when you start getting them to pray, there's some folk that took this prayer consecration like it ain't nothing. They playing with you, but they don't know this might be the last visitation they ever get. Father, don't let me play with you. Let your blessings be upon your people. As you walk back to your seat, you tell God, strengthen me. Strengthen me, God. Strengthen me, Lord. Strengthen me. Could you just get up and go grab somebody and say, Lord, help us? Can you just get up and go grab somebody and say, Lord, help us? Please help us, Jesus. Help us. Help us. We don't want to be like this. Help us. No, we can't help ourselves. Help us. Help me. Go hug somebody else and say, Lord, please help us. Just jump up out your seat and go grab somebody and say, Lord, please help us. Please help us. Please help us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Those of you in the live stream, like I say, don't play with him. It's crunch time. We're in the red zone. We're right there. It's time to make your mind up. Because he that is filthy, is going to be filthy still. Don't get stuck. He that is unholy, is going to be unholy still. But he that is righteous, shall be righteous still. Say, Lord, whatever you do, don't let me get caught with my works undone. Ain't nobody seeing you because you didn't learn what to do. Wife ain't caught you yet. Husband ain't caught you yet. Parents ain't caught you yet. But because you ain't got caught by man don't mean you ain't caught. The Lord spoke something to me one day. He said, because you can't see me don't mean I can't see you. He said, I see you. I love you today. Appreciate God. Those of you on the live stream, until next service, may God richly bless you. If God Trumpet and Zion live stream, it's giving time. The first giving option is Cash App. That's dollar sign, give T-I-Z. The second giving option is PayPal. That's paypal.me forward slash give T-I-Z. You can also mail in your gift. Send all gifts to P.O. Box 1267, Gulfport, Mississippi, 39502. On behalf of Trumpet and Zion Fellowship and our leader, Brother Darrell McCoy Sr., we want to say thank you for all of your love, all of your gifts, and all of your support. Trump and Zion Fellowship desires, above all else, to move the gospel of Jesus steadily forward. And one of the most exciting ways we do so is with the construction of our brand new Augusta, Georgia church. 
We expect to complete construction by the end of this year. And it's because of your diligence and willingness to give and to support that make this labor of love possible. Again, we say thank you, Livestream, for all that you do. Remember to stay prayerful, stay joyful, and remain faithful and diligent in all that you do for the name of Christ. We can't wait to see you again soon.